It's my pleasure to welcome you to this wonderful Sunday morning. May God bless you for choosing to be with us. And uh, we believe that you are going to be blessed in Jesus' name. I have a few announcements to make. Number one, actually one announcement. And uh, it gives me the pleasure to announce that this coming Sunday, which will be on the 13th of December 2020, we'll not be congregating in the sanctuary, but in our home. So we are going to have a, our first cell Sunday. And therefore, our cell leaders will be waiting for you. You are uh, required or requested to congregate in your cells. And I believe God is going to meet with you and encourage you and strengthen you in every way uh, that you are believing him uh, to visit you and encourage you. God bless you so much even as you uh, prepare for, uh, for cell Sunday this coming Sunday. Turn with me to the book, uh, the book of Philippians chapter 3, uh, verse 13 through verse 16. This is what it says, brethren, I'm going to read from the New Living Translation. It says, uh, No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize of which God through Christ Jesus is calling us. Let all who are spiritually mature agree on these things. If you disagree on some point, I believe God will make it plain to you. But we must hold on to the progress we have already made. We must hold on to the progress that we have already made. That's the New Living Translation of Philippians chapter 3, verse 13 through 16. Wonderful people, wonderful church, you'll agree with me. There are so many resolutions that you made in 2020. And as things are right now, the year is very fast coming to a close. We can't stop it. It's already taking a direction of closing up. Many resolutions that were made last year have not been actualized. Some have been actualized. Some are not even near. They didn't even begin. Some have been abandoned already because they were not realistic. This is what we are facing even as we come to an end of this year. It is true that in the quest to better our lives or just make ends meet, we have been injured or make mistakes that seem to be unforgivable. In the quest of making sure our vision is being actualized. In the quest of making sure that our, uh, our new year resolution is taking place, we've been injured, we've injured others, and we don't know what to do next. That is the truth of the matter. Some of us have made it and, uh, and are very okay with 2020. They're actually wishing 2020 would not come to an end. There's those who feel like 2020 was erased in their calendar. The truth of the matter is, God remains to be God. And I want to minister to us on a message entitled, An End Without Regrets. There are so many things that we put in our hearts to do and they fail to actualize and we end up having regrets. We end up having uh, 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 challenges in believing that anything will ever happen in our lives. The truth of the matter is our God loves us so much. Our God wants us to have an end that no man can expect or think of. Our God values each and every one of us and he would love to see us actualize everything that we have desired to actualize in his grace. In the quest of doing all these things and in the process of doing all these things, let's remember God would love us to walk with others. God would love you and I to cross over and to finish this year without regrets, carrying everyone on board and knowing that the distance that we are about to cover before we go home is nearer than the distance we've already covered in our failures. God is a faithful God. I would like to talk to us and give us a few points in regards to ending and finishing this year without regrets. To finish well and enjoy the end with no regrets. Paul is saying something in verse 13 of the book that we've just read in the book of Philippians chapter 3. He says, one thing I do, 
Let me read it in the New Living Translation once again. No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on this one thing. New Living Translation says, I focus on this one thing. Other translation says, this one thing do I do. One thing I do. What does he do? He says he had, he had no divided, uh, 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 he's just trying to tell us that he's, he has no divided attention. His heart is focused. There's one thing he's focusing on. He's trying to tell us he's not a double-minded individual. He's not holding to this and deciding, no, 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 God is delaying. Let me rush and finish on my own. He's not a double-minded individual person in in the quest to fulfill what God has given him to fulfill he's saying one thing does he do and therefore number one to finish well and enjoy the end with no regrets number one remain focused what you are doing may not seem like it's making sense right now but remain focused taking interest on the small small details find out why is this Puzzle not coming together. Join it. Do not focus on some who seems like they are completing their focus, their, their, their puzzle. God has a reason as to why we are where we are today. You are where you are today. Focus. Remain focused. The book of James 1.8 tells us very categorically. It says that let this lowly brother glory in his exaltation. Sorry, I'm in verse 8. James 1, 8 says, he is a double-minded man and stable in all his ways. Allow me to start from verse 5. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man and stable in all his ways. A person who is a double-minded person will seem to be so busy, but because he's double-minded, everything that he's doing is amounting to nothing. Why? He's double-minded. He's not focused. He's not remaining focused to what God has called him to do. Dear wonderful people, to finish without regrets, remain focused. Whatever you said, dreamt, and believed God for, remain focused on the same. Remain focused on the same. God would want to actualize it. But how badly do you need it? How badly do you want to see it succeed? Because if you let your eyes stray and focus on something else as opposed to what you believe in God for, you are going to lose track of the same. Remain focused. Don't be a double-minded individual. In verse 13, we hear Paul still saying, this one thing he chooses to do, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead forgetting the past one of the things that have anchored many people to a position where they cannot move any longer is because they are usually and continuously thinking about yesterday it doesn't matter what transpired yesterday it may not have worked it may not even have succeeded but there's one thing that paul is teaching us today that he has learned to forget the past forget the past this one thing does he do forgetting the past number two choose wisely what you focus on those who focus on the past it's a choice those who focus on what could have been it's a choice what those who focus to what it will be it's also a choice what are you choosing to focus on today? If you focus on your regrets, it's your choice. 
if you focus like Paul and say, I'm forgetting the past. I'm focusing on what God is about to do. I'm focusing on the vision he has given me. I'm remaining focused. One thing I choose to do, I'm remaining focused and I'm going to continue looking at what God is about to do to this thing that seems like it has no life. I'm about to see it come to life because I will remain focused. It is my vision. Choose wisely what you focus on. Paul is not saying that he has erased or removed every memory that is not good or every memory that is good. Never allow the past to deter you from moving to your future. Never allow the past to deter you from moving to the future. Paul is simply saying that he has deliberately and continuously refused to dwell, to make an abode on his past, to make a place where he can lay his head on the past. You see, if you want to see tomorrow, build everything that you need on tomorrow, not today. That's why the Bible says a wise person leads an inheritance to his children's children. That's a wise person. You become wise for seeing the future. You become wise because you are not looking at the now or the then. You become wise because you're focusing on the future. To him or Paul, to Paul the future was more important and he was willing to leave the failures and successes of the past behind and press on. Only a fool who dwell on that which cannot take place today. Only a fool would build on previous experiences. You see, if I'm enjoying what God is doing today, and I want to see him do it tomorrow, let me choose to forget what cost me not to be where I am today or what cost me not to be where I thought I should have been. Let me focus on the God who knows my today and my tomorrow. A God who knows the thoughts that he has for me. They are of good. Even delay. The delay that has occurred for me not to succeed as I, as I expected. It's also in his will. We need to know that God means well for each and every one of us. Forget the past. Choose to focus on the future. He did not, Paul did not want his failures to discourage him or his success to make himself satisfied and complacent. You see, success has a way of pulling us back. Thinking that we've made it. Thinking that we have already achieved it. You see, success has a way of delaying our future. Don't allow yourself to be delayed by your success. To have an end in 2020 that has no regrets. Refuse to be delayed by your success. Know that whatever you have achieved, there are others who have achieved even better. And your goal should be let me actualize and realize. Let me focus on what I'm supposed to see come to pass. And let me remain there until it is actualized. Let me hold on. Let me get stuck to it. Let me focus. Let me be hands on. Let me see it come to pass. This is what Jesus did. When he was on the cross, he said it is finished. He never left it halfway. It got finished. He finalized everything. Then he gave out his spirit to his father. He said, it is finished. Christ is our example. He never left the work half done. He finalized it. In totality. And today you and I are here. Proclaiming of the good work he did. Turn with me to 1 Corinthians 9.24. To verse 27. The amplified classic version. This is what he says. Do you not know that in a race. All the runners compete. But only one receives the prize. So run your race. Let me repeat that. So run your race. That you may lay hold of the prize. And make it yours. Now every athlete. Who goes into training. Conducts himself temporarily. Uh, temperate, uh, temperately. And restricts himself. In all things. They do it so. To win a wreath. That will soon wither. 
But we do it to receive a crown of eternal blessedness that cannot wither. Therefore, I do not run uh, uncertainly without definite aim. I do not box like one beating the air and striking without an adversary. But like a boxer, I buffet my body, handle it roughly, discipline it, and, uh, 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 discipline it by hardship and subdue it for fear that after proclaiming to others the gospel and the things pertaining to it, I myself should become unfit, not stand the test, be unapproved and rejected as a counterfeit. Paul has a fear that he might end up leading people but fail to attain what he's promising is in heaven. Paul has this fear. And why is it coming? Because there's a possibility of us concentrating on the wrong thing, yet thinking we are headed somewhere. Paul is giving us a hint and giving us our third point today for us to finish and have an end without regrets. Number three, stop competing with others. He's saying, do not do you not know that in a race all the runners compete but only one receive the prize? So run your race. He's not focusing on what others are doing. He's focusing on his own race. One of the most interesting things that I've seen with our runners when they're doing long distance run, running, even the short distance runners, is that each and every one of them has a stopwatch. Very interesting. And as they run, the first person to finish will always stop the watch to just make sure that he has done a good time. And surprisingly, even the last person to come to the finish line, you will see them stopping the watch. You see, the person who finished fifth, tenth, twentieth, and the last person, if there were a hundred of them, will always stop the watch. Why? It reaches a point they stop competing with human beings. They start competing with their best time. They are racing to say, I posted a better time. You see, in every race, it's all about what you can do better, not what the other person is doing. Run your race. If you start doing things because so and so did them, you are about to fail. You're positioning yourself to fail. To have an end without regrets, you need to stop competing with others and start running your race. Stop thinking because so and so made it. I must push myself to be like him. It's not going to work. You are a special person with a different type of identity that no one else has. Everyone was uniquely and in a perfectly way created by God. We can never all be the same. We can never all achieve the same thing. Others may seem like they have made it in life. They may seem like they have achieved it. Others like they are now on their way to making it. But yours seems like it stagnated. Just run your race and remember. It is your race. Just run your race. And remember. It is your race. It's not a community race. It is your race. It could be a competition based on the community way of thinking. But it is your race. Enjoy the race. Run it. If you finish in 10 hours, run it. If you finish it in 5 hours, run it. Don't mind the person who is doing 2 hours. Don't mind the person who is doing it under 10 seconds. Your race is your race. To finish with an end without, uh, to finish this 2020 and to have an end without regrets. Stop completing with others. Acts chapter 20 and verse 24. The Amplified Classic Version, this is what we read. But none of these things move me. Neither do I esteem my life dear to myself. If only I may finish my course. Paul is repeating it again. If only I may finish. Nothing moves me. I don't care what others are doing. I'm focusing. I'm remaining focused. I'm focusing on the right thing. I'm not going to run somebody else's race. I'm going to remain focused. I'm going to remain focused. Why? Because this race is not a community race. This race is not a community race. He continues to say, if only I may finish my course. 
with joy and the ministry which I have obtained from, which was entrusted to me by the Lord Jesus, faithfully to attest to the good news, which is the gospel of God's grace, his unmerited favor, spiritual blessings, and mercy. Wonderful people who are listening to me. Paul is making a very interesting statement. If only I may finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have obtained from. In other words, the same mercy, the same cup of mercy, the same cup of blessing that God has given me, this same ministry that he has entrusted me with, I must possess joy to finish this course before me. To finalize what he wants me to finish. I will remain focused. I will focus on the right thing. I'm not going to compete with others. Because I have a purpose. There's a reason as to why God has given me. This much. Number four. <laughs> Become persistent. Become persistent. Let me repeat that verse of scripture. But none of these things move me. Neither do I esteem my life dear to myself, if only I may finish my course with joy. If only he's persistent. He's saying, if only. I'm not, I'm not focusing on anything else. I'm not, I'm not going to divert this attention. I'm going to remain focused on the vision before me. I'm going to see it come to pass. For I'm not an accident waiting to happen. I'm not here by accident. I'm here to finish strong. 2020 may have its own baggages, but I have my own calling and vision, and this I must focus on. Become persistent. Press on to reach the end of the race. This world indicates great effort. Pressing on to reach the end of the race. Let me repeat. This word indicates great effort. Like the effort of a runner using all his strength to win a race. I want you to understand this. In, 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 in a race, every inch and every step you make matters. In every race, every inch and every step you make matters. Do not be comfortable simply because you can see the finish line. Do not be comfortable simply because you are seeing people cheering you and you can see the tape before you. Do not be comfortable. I'm reminded of a race that a Kenyan was racing. It was a long distance run uh, race and I believe it was either 10,000 or 5,000 meters some time back. And I don't, I don't know how many people watched this. But as this Kenyan was racing, he was leading. He was doing so well. And he was actually competing against Hel Gabriel Hel Selassie. One of the people who have tormented Kenyan runners. This man was happy because he could tell that the, the opponent is way back behind him. And as he was running, he started seeing the finish line just ahead of him. He was closing in. He was about to win this race. He was enjoying. And as he was concentrating with the supporters and seeing the finish line ahead of him, all of a sudden, almost five meters to the tape, Gabriel Hell Selassie just came and zoomed past him. You could see the frustration in the Kenyan eye. And what did he do? Because he couldn't even engage any other gear. He held his fist and punched this Ethiopian. So hard he had to stagger, though he never fell. I understand his frustrations. <laughs> he thought he had it. Thinking, oh, I can see the end. I'm, I, I've, I've made it. Hold your horses. You haven't made it yet. Concentrate on the finish line. This is what Paul is trying to tell us. It's not about the finish line. It's about you getting to the finish line. Don't be sidetracked by the people who are cheering you up and telling you how good you are, how you've made it. You see, the same mouth they are using to praise you are the same mouths they will start talking ill about you when you don't make it to the finish line. Like we are, we are talking right now. Probably we are, we were cheering this run and saying, yeah, 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 yeah. All of a sudden, mm, what's wrong with this man? 
these things do happen. We ought to be very careful. Every inch of the race counts, so value every step you make. Don't be comfortable, comfortable simply because you have seen the crossing line ahead of you. Remember, seeing is not crossing it. Number five, have faith. Have faith. Paul is speaking as one who has faith in what he wants to do. He has faith in the vision that he has been given. He has faith in the ministry that has been put by God. He's saying faithfully to attest to the good news. Gospel of God's grace. His unmerited favor, spiritual blessings and mercy. This is what he's saying. He's being faithful. He wants to be faithfully. He wants to be found faithful. And he wants to faithfully attest. He wants to, be, to, to faithfully attest to the good news of the gospel don't stop spreading this gospel don't give up because people are not listening don't give up because things are not working remain faithful we say number one be focused or remain focused number two choose wisely what you focus on number three i've just said stop competing with others and number four become persistent in what you're doing and number five have faith remember what paul is saying in this verse of scripture, in the book of 1 Corinthians 9.24, he says, Do you not know that in a race, all the runners compete, but only one receives the prize? So run your race, that you may lay hold of the prize and make it yours. You see, he has faith. Run your race. If your race is not about competing with others, it simply means that the prize is already there for you. All you need to do is finish. In the human race, only one is given. But in the spiritual race, those who finish, they have their prize awaiting them. Have faith. Don't be distracted. Have faith. Have faith. Paul does not say that the prize is of gold, silver, or bronze. He may not have seen it. But he knows it. He knows. He knows it is there. He knows it will be there. Waiting for him when he finishes the race faithfully. He knows that he may attain. He, he's running this race that he may attain. He has faith. His confidence is, no, is not so much on the tremendous price. But rather on God who is more precious than the prizes he gives. Those that... He loves. He's more precious than the prize. I would rather run this race and attain God than run a race to have a medal that will perish. Our God is waiting for us to finish this race. In the book of Isaiah, as I finish, in the book of Isaiah 43, turn with me. Isaiah 43, verse 18 to verse 19. Do not remember the former things, the book says, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The beast of the field will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches, because I give waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my people, my chosen. Such is our God. The problem is not the actualizing of your dream. The problem is us not seeing what God is doing. We fail to see what he's about to do because we continuously focus on what we failed to do. Even what you failed to do was not based on your strength, but in the will of God. Don't focus on what you failed to do. Look at the statement. I failed to do it. Simply means... I am the strength behind what I do. It's not what you do. It's not your ability. It's not your power. All that we do is in the Lord's power. To have an end that has no regrets. Don't depend on the arm of flesh. Look at what God is doing because everything he's doing is for your own good. 
everything that our master is doing is for our own good. Will you not see it? I want to close this service by telling you. 2020 is coming to an end. Don't let it define you. Let God define you. Remain focused. If you're listening to me and you'd like to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I'd like to welcome you right now and repeat these words after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I come before you. A person who have lost hope and depended on the arm of flesh. I've sinned against you. And I've digressed from your will. Forgive me. Come into my life. Change me. Transform me. And be my guide. And from today henceforth, I shall live for you all the days of my life. I believe you came from heaven and died on that cross for me that I may have life. And today, I choose to confess that you are my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you so much. And kindly find a church near you. Kind, find a pastor or call us. Email us. We would like to stand with you and even walk with you. And if it is possible, kindly visit with us. We would love to encourage you and strengthen you. God bless you so much. I would like to sum this up by just declaring a blessing over each and every one of us. Even as we believe God to have an end that uh, is exciting. An end that has no regrets. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you. See you next Sunday. Amen.